Our mind is completely clear, wide open, always fresh, alert, alive. When we stop thinking for a moment, we can identify this quality of mind. Mind isn't really a thing. Mind is synonymous with open intelligence, intelligence that is unlocatable, indefinable, yet knows everything. Our power to know, when we stop thinking, we recognize there is an alertness, a readiness to know, a cognizance. Open intelligence doesn't need to be turned on, cannot be turned off, it's always with us. Regardless of the circumstances, when we check in for short moments, repeated many times, it doesn't have to be that we stop thinking short moments many times, it could be, but it's just to recognize that alertness, that power to know for short moments many times, and recognizing how it's vast, inexhaustible. When we do so, more and more it becomes evident that it is stable, reliable, trustworthy, safe, empowering, relaxed, and potent. Within open intelligence are all the data. It's a stream of data. You look around and you see all kinds of images. You hear all kinds of sounds. You have all kinds of thoughts, sensations, emotions, but all of that, conventionally, we think it comes from somewhere else. We give it all kinds of labels, descriptions, try to make sense out of it all, rearrange it, categorize people into being good people, others bad people, looking at our own data as positive, negative, and neutral. When all the while, all of this data is simply inseparable from open intelligence, inseparable from this basic space, like you can't pull anything out of space. It's all indivisibly connected. Reflecting on that, we instinctively realize that, that everything is indivisible in this basic space. How could one thing be separate from the basic space of open intelligence? So when we practice short moments of open intelligence, allowing descriptions to be exactly as they are for short moments, then the habit of labeling everything calms down. We can look at what our life was like when we only focused on the data. It's ups and downs. It's like being on a roller coaster. When we emphasize positive data, we're happy. When we emphasize negative data, we're not happy. And then it, there's all the in-between, where we're not even really focusing on anything. But more and more, life evens out into a pool of great benefit, where the ups don't bring us into this state where we think that that's what we're supposed to have, and where the lows don't pull the carpet out from under us, and we're falling miserably. When we emphasize data, we're a victim of the data. We give it a power of its own, saying that we need the positive, we can't have the negative. By emphasizing the data, we never get to recognize its essence, open intelligence. By emphasizing descriptions, we're just off on another storyline. So when we are exhausted of the storylines and trying to control the flow of data, you know, then we come across something like Balance Sue and we're ready and open for it. We're ready and open to experience life in an empowered way rather than in a disempowered way. So an openness to just test out short moments of open intelligence repeated many times. An openness to test out the trainings to show up for open meetings, to listen to the shares of other people openly, to rely on a trainer and just see what that's like, how that is empowering. So we, we really, this, this openness is so essential. 
We don't have to contrive a sense of openness or a quality of openness. I'm just showing up as it's powerful, hearing who we truly are, open intelligence. So the, <clears throat> the topic of sensations, again, it's just a matter of really, do we want to put all of our attention on the sensations? When we put all of the attention on the sensations, we're off on a storyline. So the choice is either emphasize descriptions or choose to rely on open intelligence, allow descriptions to be exactly as they are. And we see that they rise in self-release. We have all kinds of sensations every single day. Some just grab our attention more than others. Personally, I just continue to rely on open intelligence when the descriptions were going this way and that way. Recognizing, too, that the sensations are inseparable from this vast body of open intelligence. And less and less did I describe every sensation that I had. Less and less was I compelled to rearrange all the sensations, to do anything about them, to find well-being. This true well-being, this true sense of fulfillment, satisfaction, health, it's found in open intelligence, in short moments of open intelligence. There's complete mental and emotional stability, regardless if we're feeling healthy or feeling sick. Open intelligence is, hasn't been affected by the, the sensations. So more and more you see that. You know, if we were to label every, if we went around the room and asked everybody what sensation they're having, it would just be a full array of descriptions. And if we were try, if we tried to figure out everybody's ailments and tried to figure out how to fix everyone, it would just be a mess. It would really be a mess. Short moments, many times, is the ultimate cure. I, it's healed all my health ailments. In a, in a more comprehensive way, not just on the, the physical way, but on the, in a comprehensive way. We're instinctively, when, we, when we're not emphasizing all the labels, we rely on open intelligence. We start to instinctively know how to actually take great care of ourselves. You know, we're, we open to a comprehensive order of intelligence, open intelligence, rather than a closed system of only the labels. So then we know how to proceed with something that could be a problematic health issue. Or we know when to allow it just to be as it is, and it will simply pass. My experience is, is that short moments, many times, I actually know how to relax now. In the beginning, I didn't know how to relax. If you had told me how I should relax, then I would have gotten more angry. I, re I really would have, when people would tell me, just relax. That was the trigger point to get really effing angry. <laughs> and then I would go off on the data stream of anger. I don't know how to relax, how dare you tell me I need to relax, you need to relax. <laughs> and then thinking about everything else that irritated me, and then creating a whole comic book scenario out of my anger, feeling like I could just explode and turn into, like you mentioned, the, the Hulk or something, and just smash everything. But we see, where does that lead us? You know, when anger comes up, you have the choice to either indulge it, smash everything, yell, scream. You could avoid it. You could replace it with positive data. And the fourth option is to allow it to be exactly as it is, to get to see that it too is inseparable from this basic space of open intelligence. It's the power, the vitality, the beneficial energy of open intelligence. We come to see that by allowing it to be as it is. It doesn't mean that 
when we're gaining confidence in open intelligence that it's going to feel comfortable or that it somehow magically looks like a glowing diamond of pure benefit. It's, it's not like anger will look like that. It still might feel twisted and turn red and you just are trying your best to contain yourself, but more and more through not reacting on the sensation, the emotion, the thought, you see that you have the power to respond absolutely beneficially to yourself and others. So we provide this worldwide support network for everyone to gain confidence in open intelligence rather than splintering off into storylines. We're not encouraging people to go act out their anger to get rid of it somehow. That would be neutralization of our beneficial potency. If anger arises, when we let it be as it is, you see that you have great discernment of what needs to be done in that situation. Maybe it's a wrathful response that's required. But when I was gaining confidence in letting anger be as it is, I realized it was just my own data streams going wild and that I didn't need to do anything about them. It was just more of my own making of not liking the way things were in that moment and then getting all wrapped up in it, trying to neutralize my beneficial potency. So there's nothing we need to do now about the anger other than allow it to be as it is, to really recognize that it's inseparable from open intelligence. Like the color blue in the sky are inseparable. You cannot take one out of the other. You cannot take your anger out of open intelligence. Open intelligence, an inexhaustible expanse of benefit, including and containing all data, positive, negative, and neutral, within its great scope of benefit. Courageous, relying on short moments is very courageous. The tendency is to not allow things to be as they are. 99.999% .999 of people are not letting things be as they are. So when we hear this and we test it out and we look around and there's not many people doing that, it's very courageous. But yet when we come to the communities of balance, we see many people that are actually living this way. And we see the results of what some, when somebody has allowed their descriptions to be as they are, to rely on the Four Mainstay support. And we see more and more of an eloquence. By nature, that all the data are purely beneficial. The eloquence of reality as it is. The more we stop fighting it and trying to rearrange it, the more we can design our lives to look exactly like how we want them to, for the benefit of all. The purpose of Balance You is for the benefit of all. I mean, you naturally see that. When you start recognizing the immense benefit in your life, you see how it's possible for other people, so you naturally want to share that through whatever means you have, through your speech, through your contributions through your love and care for people. Then love is, isn't just some made-up fantasy tale that we find in movies and romantic novels. And you see that love is pervaded in this moment. It's, we can't locate it as a special state. All the sensations and feelings around that could be different, but inseparable from open intelligence. 